What's up guys? Today I'm going to be talking about split image filters and other DIY ways that you can uh, make some really creative multiple exposures. So in this video, I want to show you guys a couple different methods that I use to blend my multiple exposures. And it, there are a couple different ways to do them, uh, know which way is right, and each way kind of has pros and cons. So you, you pick and choose depending on you know, what, what effect you're trying to achieve. So uh, what we're going to need here is a couple different things around the house. Some tape, some scissors, uh, construction paper. Or if you go the, the filter route, you're going to need a, a skylight filter or any kind of filter you don't mind taping over. And possibly a uh, lens cap too. So the three different ways, well, let me explain first what split image filters and, and split image is really. It's basically when you're shooting multiple exposures, you're going to take two or more exposures, right? And all you're trying to do is you're just trying to block out half the frame, you know, like this, like this, like that, like that. However you want to block out the frame and on your first exposure, that will record what's not blocked out and your second exposure will you want to move the frame somehow and then incorporate something else in the area that wasn't shot so there's a bunch you know a bunch of different ways to do this and the couple that i like to do are taping off a filter actually uh, cutting a lens cap that you don't want obviously cutting particular lens caps that that aren't aren't like this the pinchy kind don't seem to work well these are more the old style. This is from a Bell & Howell. So it's basically just a circularized cap. Circularized. What is circularized? I, <laughs> I just make up words as I go. Don't even worry about it. A circularized, <laughs> a circularized cap, right? The circular cap. It was from an old Canon. So I was able to cut that and then create that. And another option, and this is kind of my favorite because you really can do so much with it, is taking some construction paper and cutting it. Now, this kind of looks funky and it's abstract art, I get it, right? But the reason, there's totally a purpose for these. Now, when you're holding this over, to give you an example, so say you have lens, right? And you're looking and you're trying to hold this over. This can really create, depending on how, you know, and of course we're looking through the viewfinder now and we're, we're pulling in and out, it really creates a nice gradient, okay? You're pretty free to move however you want. This same thing here, okay? And I, I want to point out also, it's better to have something that's dark or black when you're doing this because obviously the darker the portion that you're blacking out, the easier it is for the second exposure to expose over top of that. So anyway, with this, you know, you could go like this. You could even have, you know, nice and straight, move over like this, like this, you know, and. Again, you're looking through the lens, so this is kind of blurring or, or getting larger and smaller depending on where you're, you're moving it. And I liked also bending. So say we have an object like here. Okay, you can actually take this and you can, well, we are actually looking through the lens, it would be like this. Here's your object, would be my finger, my, my big old blurry finger. You're looking through that lens and you're blocking this off. So everything that's blocked off by the card from the viewfinder will be able to be exposed in the second frame or third frame or whatever. So that's the, the method I usually prefer. And where that gets into trouble is because you kind of have to do two-handed, two one-handed gymnastics with this, okay? Especially with the F3 for me. Now, it can be easier or harder depending on the ergonomics of your camera. I can tell you, you know, from my personal experience, shooting an F3 upside down holding it like this, this is how I have to do it, hold it upside down, look through the viewfinder, try to reach that button, okay, and then, and then manipulate whatever card I'm, I'm doing in front, okay, it gets like, it's super hand gymnastics. So, you know, some cameras may be easier to do this, others may not. And I want to point out also, I have a sequence, I've made so many accidental shots, you know, like I would take a half exposure and then just I'm in the habit of immediately winding. So to prevent that, I'll go through and I, I have a set sequence now. I know, okay, if I'm going to shoot two multiple exposures, for instance, on the F3, basically I lift this tab out. And I know every single, I can't do it because, there we go. I lift that tab out. 
and this is basically my multiple multiple exposure lever so i know every single time even if i forget oop, i'm going to have a multiple exposure and that prevents me from advancing the frame before i've actually taken the two shots so i would totally recommend getting in a sequence so this way you don't forget unless it doesn't matter and then don't worry about it so this half of uh, lens cap obviously not going to work for this here but it works in the same fashion that the card will okay you can kind of move it however you want around this you know hold it in hold it out whatever and the final way that that i've done is sometimes i'll use this filter i'll take just a regular uv filter and just take some black tape and right through the center now, where this will get you into trouble, now this is great because, okay, you can two-hand the camera, which is wonderful. But it kind of limits you to the quadrants, okay? Half, 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 and half. So it does limit you. But, again, it's, it's give and take. It really all depends on what you're trying to shoot. And there's been a couple times when I've, like, spun this, right? not realizing okay we're at the end of the threads and then had to catch the thing as it almost fell off so now of course this isn't the only way to do this you know there's a few options that i think you can purchase uh, lomo has the lomo splitzer and there's the split image cam uh, there's a couple different things that you could you know purchase honestly this is the most flexible easiest and cheapest way that i like to go about doing this so now i'll put up a couple images here that i've taken using some of these methods So that about wraps it up for this, guys. Now, if any of you, you know, do this or do something similar or do something not even similar, I'm really curious to be, I'm always all about the hacks. You know, I'm, I'm about hacks and experimenting and all that jazz. So if there's something that you guys do that I haven't mentioned, you know, by all means, please drop a comment, shoot me a DM uh, and let me know because, you know, I like to tinker. So, you know, that, that will just give me more ways to tinker. So please do that. And uh, if you like the video, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. And if this is your first time to the channel, what's going on? Please feel free to subscribe. Uh, every couple days I come out with new videos. Some are how-tos, uh, others are like overviews, reviews. Everything's pretty much film photography related. So if that's your kind of thing, go ahead, click subscribe, and you'll get the latest and the greatest. So until next time, we'll see you.